finishing up with the logical reasoning section right now, which is coming like pretty easily to me, which is good. Uh, but then like I'm touching back on the game. So I'm following your schedule and those are like kind of getting me, but. Well, so is game something you want to talk about today? What would be most useful for you to dive in on? Yeah, I guess the games, like the easiest way to improve is it just with practice, basically. Yeah, practice is a large part of it. And since you have the study plan, that's your roadmap showing you exactly what to be doing every single day over the course of your prep and specifically which resources to use on a given game type before doing several large games of that type. So moving from ordering games to grouping to combinations and within each category, easy to hard to help you okay. build up slowly. Okay, so where I'm at right now, I'm on week eight. Do you think that's okay that I'm not getting like everything right within the 30 minutes? Like, is that normal? Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, you okay. can't expect 100% accuracy within a week. So you just want to get to a reasonable level of comfort and familiarity with that game type, then move on to the next game type while still staying fresh on the previous ones. Yeah, I think it's like if I don't have the time, I get everything right. But like the timer just is so, it ruins everything. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so I would suggest for that reason, focus on accuracy first before okay. introducing the pacing and the timing. So you'll see in the schedule, I'll tell you to do everything untimed first mm -hmm. and to give yourself a chance to really learn and dissect the problems and then introduce the timing. And if 35 minutes is too tight for you, then you might want to do 45 minutes or 40 minutes and then gradually reduce it maybe even one minute at a time. Okay, yeah, because I like I've done all of the logic game, like I've read everything, like gone through that part of the schedule. I'm just like going back doing the like practice ones. So you can I'll just maybe expand the time that I give myself. But yeah, yeah. it's going it's going good. I like the logical reasoning a lot. I feel lucky because like that's just coming really easily. So good, that's great because it's half the exam. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, do you have any like I don't know? I want to hear your advice about like say you improved your score from a 143 to 170 you said with like, 152 to 175 oh 152 okay so from following the schedule that you give everyone well i actually did things the wrong way back when i was studying i didn't have these schedules back then but these are the result of what i learned along the way and so personally <laughs> i was just doing exam after exam measuring my results, being happy or sad about them, and then moving on. But that was a big waste of time and burning through valuable practice material. So mm -hmm. the study schedule is basically the distillation of what I wish I had done and wish, what I wish I had, had had available to me back at that time, which basically involves building the foundation first, then okay. introducing pacing, then bringing in endurance. Okay. So I'm studying for like 25 hours a week. Do you think that's good and then for like three and a half months like total 25 hours a week is perfectly reasonable okay and if you need to retake you can i mean april is yeah. you still have available to you june july august so plenty of chances to retake if you want to and then still apply at the very beginning of the cycle yeah that's that's the plan i don't want to have to take it twice but because the studying is terrible but <laughs> but but probably will end up taking it twice. Have, yeah, you well, met, have you met anyone who's done like really, really well on their first time taking it? Yeah, it certainly, it happens all the time, but retaking is also more common than ever before. And because law schools don't average multiple scores and only take the highest, there is incentive for you to retake if you think you could do at all better. And so if you, even if you scored at your target, because there's a margin of error or a score band of three and a half points on each end, through luck alone, you could do three points better or even four points better. And so there is reason to retake because obviously a 164 would open far more doors for you than a 160 would or get you more mm -hmm. scholarship money. And so even if you do well and you're happy with it in April, you might want to consider retaking if you think you could do even a little better. Okay. Um, I, don't know, I don't have any like specific questions. Yeah, it's basically just the logic games that I'm not doing good at. But well, how like, many games have you done? Um, I've done like at least 22 um, mm -hmm. like tests of games because I've done like two whole like 
52 through like the 10 prep test things. I've done all the logic games in two of those and then like a couple in another one. So. Okay, good. So you've done a good number of them, but of course there are still many more available to you. And so you might want to get some of the older books of games or of course work through the newer games as well as test day approaches. Mm -hmm. And if you are thrown off by any of those weird curveball games, you might even want to look at some of the oldest games that are a little bit different, a little bit strange, just to practice putting yourself in that kind of uncomfortable situation. Okay. Yeah, there's, it's so crazy how they vary, like from difficulty. Like I did the September 2018 one last week, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad for people who did that test. <laughs> that one was terrible. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of fun doing them. Like I like getting the new packets of tests. It's like exciting. <laughs> Well, that's exactly the right approach. And that's what it takes to get a top score. The people who get 170 plus, they grow to love and appreciate this exam for all its complexity and all the tricks they lay in there. If you can spot them and dissect them and kind of reverse engineer the exam, then you're going to understand it a lot better and of course, do better on test day. And so I would say, you know, definitely welcome that mindset in that you're Getting, you're learning to love this exam, you're getting obsessed with it, and you want to do every single game ever released. That's definitely <laughs> going to put you on the path to getting a perfect game score. And you want that because the average 170 score typically gets about 10 questions wrong. And that's perfect or minus one on games, and then minus three on each of the other sections. So it's much easier to perfect games than it is to perfect reading comprehension. So keep really? focusing on game. Yeah, really. Okay. Because games are mathematical, they're symbolic, so they don't have the same ambiguities of language you see in logical reasoning and reading comp that are much tougher to score perfect on. It's easier mm -hmm. to fall for mistakes and traps there than it is okay. in games. So games are like the biggest area of improvement for people usually, like you can practice that the most? Yeah, especially when starting and they seem scary at first, they're the most learnable and so you make big gains there. But then on top of that, even more so with continued study on games, especially if you do the majority of games ever released or every game ever released, then you could really get to a point where you're perfecting them. Okay. And then you think it's like best to not try and like rush time yourself. Like even, even though I'm at like eight weeks already, you don't think like I should, you think I should focus more on like accuracy? Well, it's like, you want to do both. I mean, so at a certain okay. point, once you've gained a basic familiarity with the, fa the foundation of the exam, the different sections and question types, then you introduce timed sections, then you introduce full length exams. And if you notice any weak areas, then of course you could work on those to the side, maybe doing some of them untimed or by type. But okay. yes, as it gets closer, of course, you do want to introduce just timing. And so, mm -hmm. like I said, you could go from 45 minutes or 40 minutes, gradually reducing to, th to 35. At least yeah, I've a never bit thought of that. of that. That's a good idea. Yeah, because I can get like like three done, and usually I get them like mostly all right. But then, like I have like three minutes left for the fourth one. So, and then you suggest like when you're taking the test to hop around, kind of. I read like see which ones like are the easiest and do those first. Well, yeah, it's definitely something worth experimenting with. And so I would say in logic games, for example, you could do the orientation question, then the local questions, then finally the global. That's one okay. approach you could take. In reading comp, you could do the main idea and primary purpose questions first, then the detail questions, then finally the more inferential questions that require a bit of reading between the lines. So it's okay. something to play around with and see if that helps you build your understanding as you go. Some folks like to simply do things in the order given, but there is a certain value to building on your previous work. Okay. Um, so what, do you have any like advice? I don't know, I, sh I should have had more questions to ask you. I didn't really know what this like interview thing was. Oh, totally like. fine. You know, it's about whatever questions come up for you, whatever would be most useful for you. And I guess the biggest thing I would leave you with now is as test day is approaching for you in the final month or two, I want you to be thinking about doing full length timed exams and introducing those and also making them as realistic as possible. So aiming okay. to properly simulate test day conditions. So for the digital LSAT, doing some practice tests on a tablet, and then also strictly timing yourself. No pausing the clock or taking breaks or anything like that and simulating as fully as possible. So taking practice tests at the same time you'll be taking them 
on test day and waking up at the same time and maybe eating the same breakfast and the same snack and drinking coffee or not drinking coffee or the same outfit. You're like, you're lucky LSAT t-shirt, whatever you want to do. Like (laughs) keep all of that as regimented as possible so that you do several run throughs like that. And then test day is like just another practice test. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. Cause I'm taking it at like eight o'clock. So <laughs> yeah, I'm just like working and stuff. So it's been pretty easy. I bartend at like nighttime and just study during the day. It's ideal. I can't imagine doing this during college. Did you, yeah. st- did you study during? Your I did. Dad? I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that seems terrible. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot, but I mean, there's pros and cons or you're in the academic mindset perhaps, but yeah, I mean, you are where you are and you found a library to study in. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I literally like moved to a different state to like be by myself. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So better chance to um, focus. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, it was great connecting with you, Abigail. Uh, before we yes. sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, I think that it was like kind of helpful to know that the time that I've dedicated um, is like fine. And that also by eight weeks, it's okay to not be like, perfect at logic games. That's just what I've been stressing out about. So it was reassuring. Awesome. Glad I was able to help. Well, please keep in touch and let me know if you need anything at all as you move forward. Okay. And thanks so much for like posting all the logic game videos. Those are super helpful. <laughs> oh, of course. I'm glad, glad you're finding them helpful. Yeah. That's the best. Well, awesome. thank you. Of nice course. to meet you. You too. Take care. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.